Hello, and welcome to Lonely TTRPG, the actual play and review podcast for solo TTRPGs. I'm Steel Stash, and today we are going to play And the Gunslinger Followed by Hypnos. It should be plain to see that the biggest inspiration for this game is the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. The Gunslinger, the Kid, and the Cowboy are archetypes taken directly from the pages of those novels. A large piece of the story is also the reason the game is designed as it is. Huge spoilers for the Dark Tower series in the paragraph right after this. The tower endlessly draws the gunslinger toward it, but it's a loop, a quest that seems never ending, but with slight variations between each one. This is why the game is designed in this way, to mimic how the Dark Tower works in the story. You can play through the game over and over again with the same character and same events and have different outcomes occur. The quest for the characters never ends. It loops endlessly. There is always a gunslinger and there is always a cowboy. All right. So uh, this game uses dice. So when you attempt to perform an action that has some element of risk or where success is not guaranteed, you make a roll. When a roll is required, you roll a d6. If you decide your roll isn't high enough, you may roll an additional d6, and you must add it to your total. So 1 is a failure, 2 to 4 is a success with a cost, 5 to 6 is a success, and 7 plus is a failure. When you get a failure and there's no penalty already listed in the event, you must either add a condition onto yourself or move the clock of the cowboy's escape forward 1. When you get a success with a cost, you can add a condition onto yourself, lose a useful or important item, or move the clock of the Cowboy's Escape forward one. So to play this game, you roll 2d6, check the matching result on the random event table, you read the event, describe how your character's archetype will handle it, attempt a roll if necessary, and then journey from that point onward. As if the character were recounting their event in writing. Do this five times with five events. If you make it through all five without filling up the clock, you have reached the cowboy. When you reach the cowboy, all of your rolls against them have minus one for each condition you have gained. If you fail, the cowboy might kill you or they might just taunt you as they escape yet again. You do not check damage or HP. Instead, as different situations wear you down, you have different penalties that happen. The most common one is that you gain a condition. When you fail a roll, think about the fiction and decide what the most likely outcome will be. And the clock. Sometimes things go wrong during the travel event and the cowboy gets just a little further ahead. Every time the cowboy gains distance on you, advance the clock once. When the clock reaches four, the cowboy has escaped your grasp yet again. It'll be a long time before you can ever manage to get back onto their trail and catch up to them. Now, this game was designed first and foremost for solo play. If you're playing this solo, you journal from the point of view recounting the event in their journal. If you fail to reach the cowboy, fail your motivation after reaching them, or succeed once you reach them, journal about that too. For example of a solo play as the gunslinger, look at the next page. All right, and then we got a little example of play. Some more examples, some more examples. This game does have a co-op mode where one player declares an action they want to take. The player to their left takes on a pseudo-GM role for that action. Instead of journaling in between encounters, talk between the characters about what happened, about what you will do when you catch the cowboy, and about what you think will happen afterwards. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and transition to gameplay as we talk about the gunslinger and their allies. Alright, after all, I can't show you the entire book, but that would be mean. So the Gunslinger are their allies. It is assumed that each character carries items that would make sense for them to have. Each one of them also carries a firearm, as it is dangerous to travel without one. So the Gunslinger gets a plus one bonus rolls regarding firearms. If you roll a seven, it is still considered a success. Only once you may reveal and then perform something that you were taught by your ancient Gunslinger order. A motivation, the cowboy betrayed you. You won't stop until they are dead. The kid gets a plus one bonus to rolls where you attempt to gather information. Same thing, if you roll a seven on this, it is still considered a success. Only once the kid can take a piece of information or an ability they know from their world and apply it to the situation. Motivation, the cowboy knows more about how you got into this world than you do. You need this information. 
Uh, the badge gets plus one to roles where you non-lethally handle violent situations. Only once you may call in a single favor from local law enforcement, and for your motivation, the cowboy has committed many crimes and needs to serve their sentence in prison. For the preacher, you get plus one bonus to roles where you help somebody non-violently. Once you may pray for a minor miracle and have it happen. Your motivation, the cowboy has committed many wrongs. They need to repent or be stopped at any cost. The doctor gets plus one rolls to medical knowledge. Once they may remove a condition. And the motivation, you saved the life of the cowboy and they did great evil. You have to fix your mistake. Killing is the very last resort. And for the witch, which is the last character type, you have a plus one bonus to magical knowledge. Once you may craft a powerful nature-based spell. This spell requires you to either gain a condition or sacrifice an item. And for your motivation, the cowboy has magic running through their veins. Their body could be used for powerful reagents. In addition, there's a random oracle table. And to get your random result from the oracle table, roll 2d6. Read the numbers from left to right and look at the results connected to that number. For example, if you roll a 3 and a 5, your result would go to 35 on the table. If you rolled the same event that you have already rolled, you re-roll until you land on an event you have not yet done. Sometimes a condition or event ending will be listed. Other times the event is more freeform. If you feel the event ending listed doesn't fit the narrative that is building, feel free to ignore it completely. There will sometimes be something written underneath the prompt in another font. You should not read these until you have already chosen your course of action and rolled for it. And in bold, a character archetype name will be written. If you are playing that character, you can read that section. All right, so skimming past all of the table, we get to the final event. After five travel events, you finally reach the cowboy. They wield incredibly powerful magic. They have guns at their disposal as well. They will attack if they feel threatened, but may be reasonable if they are allowed to go free afterwards. Uh, if any of the following conditions are on the character, an alternative may happen. Uh, so charmed, cursed objects, fractured mind, and then credits. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so first of all, we are going to need to set up our clock. So we are just going to go ahead and do a very simple, very simple clock of zero to four. All right. Before we get started, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Dungeon Glitch for the music on this. You can find them on Spotify and find their playlist. It is awesome. I will put a link down in the bottom. Also, if you enjoyed this, then please, please give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a review. All right. Those things help out visibility a lot. Also, if you really want to support us, we do have a Patreon link down below. For just a couple bucks, you guys get some early access, AMAs, stuff like that. All right, so let's get into it. First and foremost, we need to decide what character we're going to be. Now, as is usual, we are going to do this randomly here. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six different character types. So let's go ahead and roll. 1d6 to find out what type of character we're going to be. And we got a 2. That means we are going to be the kid. So the kid. Remember, plus 1 bonus to gathering information. Once we can take some information or, and we know that or we know the cowboy knows more about us and how we got to the world and we need to know that information. Outstanding. So, now that we have that all in play, let us get started. So, for gameplay, like I said, we are going to, for gameplay, we're going to roll on the oracle table. We are going to find out what our thing is. And we are going to attempt to overcome that obstacle or gather that information all in attempts to catch up to the cowboy. And that is how things will go. Like I said, we are the kid. We have come into this world. We are unsure what is going on. Out in the distance, we have seen the cowboy. We finally spotted him after all this time. 
and we must catch him. All right, so rolling 2d6, we got two and six. So 26. So going to the oracle table for 26. A small crowd has gathered around a hastily built stage. On the stage is a person dressed in clothes of a wanderer. A banner above them proclaims this as the last gunslinger's performance. All right. So we come up on a stage and we see that there appears to be a wanderer saying that this is the last gunslinger's performance. Now, we're the kid. We know the gunslinger. And this isn't the gunslinger. So we're going to go ahead and confront him. And we're going to try to get some information from him. And so we are going to go ahead and roll 1d6 for information. And we got a 3, which is actually a 4. Which, according to our chart, is a success with a cost. All right, since we're rolling for information, we'll do that. So there is some more text underneath this for 26. It says, if you attempt to discern the truth and succeed, you learn that this person started the training and left in the dead of night. They are cocky and tell you it doesn't matter what you tell people because they won't believe a stranger. So that sounds about right. This is a, uh, this is a harsh world. This is a harsh world full of hard people. I can't say that I blame them for that, though I do blame them for their... I do blame them for their lies. Which is not good, having traveled with the guns. I do try to warn them off that... Things will not go well if they run into an actual gunslinger. But, now I have a cost, and... Let's see. When you get a success with the cost, you can add a condition. Lose a useful or important item or move the clock of the escape forward. Hmm. Alright, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and move the clock forward one. So Yeah, we'll go ahead and move the clock forward one. I wasted a little bit of time on this fake gunslinger. And hopefully that doesn't come out to bite me in the end. So for our next event, a 6-3. You pass through the town uneventfully. Outstanding. Luckily, after that, I managed to I managed to keep my nose down. Obviously, the very cynical opinion and losing a little bit of time with the with the fake gunslinger made me realize that I have to focus. I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my head down. I'm gonna pull my brim down low, and I'm just going to strut. So that brings us to turn three. All right, so we're going to roll 2d6 for the next turn, and we get ourselves 3-2. So 3-2, a couple of bandits catch you in between towns. There are only three of them, and their weapons are nothing more than retooled farming equipment. They demand all of your food or your gun and all its bullets. Man, look, I'm going to call their bluff on this. It's like, look. Look, I know you think you got me dead to rights. I know you think that 3 to 1 is a pretty good odds on your part. But I'm here to tell you, I ain't the one. So we're going to go ahead and roll our 1d6 and see how we do on this non-violent resolution calling their bluff. And that is a 5. That is a success. We call their bluff. They hang their heads in shame. They kind of kick at the dirt. And they run off. They are you n n o f t. All right, so that's going to bring us up to turn four. We are at turn four now. We have almost caught the gunslinger. He is right in our grasp. I can see him. Let's see what happens here. 2-2. Two, 2-2 two. Two, two on the oracle table. All right. You pass by the town crier who describes a devious person matching the description of the cowboy going in a different direction out of town from the one you're going. Look, I'm hot on the Cowboys trail, all right? I got this guy dead to rights. He is in my sights. I call BS on this, that he's going in a different direction. I'm going to check to make sure I'm going to try and get some information out of this. All right, and that is success with a cost. So the additional thing that goes with this is after you've decided which way to go, roll a D6. If it was even, they were wrong. If it was odd, they were right. So... Yeah, I'm calling BS on them. I got I got success with a cost. We're going to go ahead and advance that clock forward one more tick. 
But we're gonna roll one more d6. It doesn't explicitly state what happens if the crier was wrong or right. I'm going to assume I lose another piece on my clock though. So that is how I'm gonna play this. And it was odd. The town crier was right, I was wrong. Man, that clock advances to three. But it is turn five. All I have to do is survive this. All I have to do is survive this, and I catch the cowboy. 1-6. One, 1-6. Six. One, six. Hopefully we do all right on this. All right. So, you were stopped on the outskirts of town by a person with a strange cart setup. Various useless-looking odds and ends lie in the cart. They claim that they are powerful magical ingredients. They offer to give you just one to aid you on your quest. You know what? I'm real close. I'm real close. And that cowboy, he got some mighty powerful magic on him. I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. All right. So if you choose to take an item, roll a D6. If the result is a 6, you took the only magical item. It allows you It allows you to do the Witch's Nature-Based Spell ability once. All right. So let us roll our 1D6. And it is a five. I did not get it. So I'm going to assume I picked up a cursed item. Again, it doesn't explicitly state. However, we are looking for we are looking for some stuff to do. So we're going to go ahead and add that cursed item to our inventory. But that is five turns. That is five events as I take off from the cart vendor clutching this magic item. I find him. I find the cowboy. He is sitting under a mesquite tree with his hat pulled over his eyes a smile curling his lips he doesn't even move as i come walking up to him and instead just kind of draws out the side of his cigarette well kid what can i do for you let's see so after so i'm gonna look him i'm gonna look him dead in the eye I mean, first of all, I'm going to tell him to lift up his brim so I can look him dead in the eye. And I'm going to say, now, missa, I hear tell that you know how I got here to this world. And I need to know that. And I need you to tell me right now. I need you to tell me right now. And we are going to call this a day. And you can go on your way and I can go on my way. And I'm going to brandish that magic item that I got. But because it's cursed, the cowboy lifts up his brim and sees it. And he looks afraid. So that's going to give me a plus one, two nonviolent rolls. So let's roll our 1d6. And because I'm asking for information, I get a plus one. And because I got this cursed item, I get a plus one. So that is a plus two, which is great because I rolled a three. So that plus one, plus one gives me... Five. That is a success. And that cowboy, he's going to stare down that cursed item. And he's going to shuffle on back tighter against that mesquite tree. Now, boy, I reckon. I reckon you think you might have power for holding that item in your hand. And truth tell, I wouldn't blame you. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you that yes. You are not originally from here. You are from a far off place. You are from a far off place and a different time. And you were brought here for your ability. Your ability to talk and your ability to get the type of information that you need. That is my powerful ability, my boy. My powerful ability. Ability that will come in quite handy to one such as myself. If you would but put down that little trinket you got in your hand. And I go my way and you go yours. And maybe maybe one day soon, I will give you a cowl. And we just might see if we can work out some type of deal. Now, missa, a deal is a deal. And I did tell you that if you told me. I would let you go on your way. And I'm going to go ahead and pocket that cursed item. And I'm going to turn heel. 
and start walking into the sunset, leaving the cowboy where he is. Now, that, ladies and gents, is And the Gunslinger Followed. All right, so initial thoughts on the game. All right, um, I definitely played it a lot more Western than I think was intended. I have not read the Dark Tower series. I am a horrible nerd. I will admit that. But even as a uh, even as a chase game, the mechanics aren't that bad. It's a good thing that this is intended to be played as a loop, because that gameplay experience is very short. Some other things, I wish that I wish that there were more conditions included in the game. Because you have the option of a cost and assuming a condition. And the three conditions that are listed in the final event are Charmed, Cursed Object, and Fractured Mind. And... Those all sound interesting, but if you were supposed to take a condition at some point, a little more variety in those conditions would be nice, just to give you something else to feed off of. But outside of that, outside of that, the prompts were nice. I like the I like the amount of variety. I like the fact that it's not deck based. I've been getting kind of burned out on deck based stuff, and I got it. I'm gonna only run into so many different game styles. But the fact that it was roll for your prompts, I thought that was I thought that was good. I thought that was interesting. The prompts in there were nice. It also did have some nice add-ons for the character. Like certain prompts had stuff that related solely to the characters. And, uh, to the various archetypes and that added an interesting bit of flair to it now it does get a little bit it does get a little bit difficult when the only like actions you're given allusion to are based on the bonuses you get in based on the bonuses you get in the character archetype descriptions. So that made approaching various situations difficult because it's... I defaulted to trying to get information because I was playing somebody who was good at information. And I think I think a lot of that's on me. I know that personally I have issues with... If the rules don't say it, that doesn't mean that it's not allowed. You know, part of that's... Uh, Part of that's the problem of being a soldier because we have rules for everything and if there's not a rule for it, you probably shouldn't do it anyway. At the very least, you're going to get yelled at for it and then they're going to make a new rule. So not having not having a list of available things that you could do, even if it's a non-inclusive list, made my gameplay more difficult. I did find myself pausing a lot more my oracle roles trying to think of what I wanted to do I didn't necessarily want to do a pacifist run on this for lack of a better term I kind of fell into it again being someone who is good at information but also the only uh, the only situation that really warranted violence that I ran across was the three quote unquote bandits and that was described as enough of a non-threat that I was relatively confident that I could just scare them off. So, again, it probably works out better if you've read the Dark Tower series. Still, all in all, not a bad experience. A fun game. Definitely check it out. Uh, definitely check it out if you like Stephen King, if you like the Dark Tower series. And even as a, uh, even as a chase and a western... Still very good. Still very good. So you can find And the Gunslinger Follow on itch at M-I-C-H-A-N-I-K-O-S dot itch dot I-O slash And the Gunslinger Followed. 
or go to itch and search for and the gunslinger followed it is three dollars on there so by all means go check it out it is definitely worth three dollars and it is definitely worth a uh it is definitely worth the half hour of your time it'll take to run through a game and if you like it by all means play several games and if you do pick it up please make sure to leave them a review and tell them that steel stash sent you so that we can get more of our word out there because after all the sooner people start sending me games to play the easier this job becomes for me but i have been steel stash and thank you for listening to the lonely ttrpg you've been listening to lonely ttrpg the solo ttrpg live play and review if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. You can also reach us at Twitter at BDDC underscore pod or at Black Dragon Dungeon Company at gmail.com. If you really like us, you can consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. Thank you so much.